This is the PixInsight process tutorial for the multi-scale linear transform process. You find this process in different categories. You find it in wavelets, you find it in multi-scale processing, and you find it, and that's probably the most descriptive one, in noise reduction, because this is one of the multitude of noise reduction um, possibilities that you have in PIX Insight. It has a very good reputation as a noise removal process. It works equally well with linear and nonlinear images. It is possible to only attack the lightness or the chrominance, so it has a lot of advantages. The disadvantage is it's complex and you have to understand what's happening here. And given that this is actually the successor of the Atros Wavelet Transform, in the old name there was already included this term wavelets. And that's the thing that you have to understand to understand how this process is working. So let's start there. So in Pix Insight, a picture is actually constructed out of a multitude of wavelets. And these wavelets, they're actually sorted by the scale of components. So from individual small dots to rather large objects like a nebula, for example. To illustrate that, you can do that yourself. You go in script, in script, you go to image analysis, and then to extract wavelet layers. That's a default script, which you also have in your PixInsight version. When you click that, you can tell it how many numbers of layers it should do. Let's say five plus the extract residual layer. You leave everything else as it is and you click OK. So let's look now at these layers. And we start with layer number zero. You might at a moment see that it's simply gray. But when you're hyper stretching it, you see that it practically has no content, but a lot of noise. I can show you if we do here a small preview. Look at that. That's simply noise. So let's go to the next layer, layer one. Still rather gray. We hyper stretch it. You see now better it has again some, some droplets. And again, if we do a preview, you can see these are stars, small stars and a lot of noise. Layer two, now it already looks more familiar. Now you see it's getting black in the, in the back and you see the stars. We do a preview, and especially if we hyper stretch it, you see again the noise in the background, but it's more obvious now that these are here stars. Layer three, stars get now bigger, more pronounced. And with that also the noise actually is diminishing. It's now more the stars and less the noise as you can see. Obviously, there's still something in the back. Layer four, practically have now here all stars. And then layer five is simply the residual stuff, as much as the halos and so on. So these are wavelets. Wavelet zero is the one with the smallest structure, practically only pixel size. The residual one has the very big structures in it. So with that, we come again to the multi-scale linear transform. So what do the wavelets have to do with this process. As you can see here, these layers, these are the wavelets. Layer one is in principle the wavelet zero, as we have seen before, up to residual. And we can say how many layers we, have, we want. We can up it to five, then we have the same concept as we looked before when we ripped the picture apart. But let's start on the top here, algorithm. You can see you have, can have this starlet transform and that is nothing else than what happened before in the Atrus wavelet transform. There is also this funny enough this multi-scale linear transform which probably should be the more newer one as the process is actually named afterwards but all the sources that I saw say stay on the starlet transform that this actually is the algorithm that performs better. So we leave that. So the first thing we're going to do is we install a linear mask which protects actually our stars so that they're not denoised, that they're not too soft. So we activate the linear mask, we open it up, we want to preview. Everything else is grayed out now, that's okay. We open the preview and you already see here how it looks like. So the bigger star already well protected. If we want, we can amplify it a little bit. We go to a two, 
And that's already okay. We don't want to have more protected than this. So we leave it like that so we can remove the preview mask. We now get a preview of the multi-scale transform function so that we see what we're actually doing and the mask actually is enabled. So that's fine. We can also close that down now that it doesn't confuse us anymore. With that, we can actually start now with the wavelets. So if you remember, the wavelet zero had just this pixel size objects and a lot of noise. So what we can do here, we double click on it where there's the green hook that the red cross comes. And what that means is this layer is discarded. It will not be included in what we're doing. And that's exactly what we want. We don't need it. And you see if I activate it again, disactivate it again, it doesn't affect the rest of the picture at all. We can obviously not do that for the other wavelets who have a larger scale. Otherwise, we would actually really lose information that we want to keep. So here, we have now to reduce the noise. And given that the noise is actually decreasing from wavelet to wavelets, we will put the biggest noise reduction on this layer too. So what we're doing is we activate here the noise reduction. We leave the threshold on three. The threshold actually tells us how strong the noise reduction is. The amount actually tells us how much is used of the original picture and how much of the noise reduced pictures. We reduce that to 50%. The iteration as the last setting tells us how many times it runs through this noise reduction cycle. And we add this up to three iterations. Now, obviously these are things you can play with. These are just numbers which have been proven to be rather good. But depending on your noise situation of your picture, you will have to play with it to increase the noise reduction or even to lower it down. Now, another thing is that obviously this noise reduction smooths everything a little bit down also at the edges. We protected the stars, that's good, but still it might happen. We can counter that with the bias, which sharpens again these edges. And we have to be very careful here, but we can, for example, say here 0.005. So just very slightly, we can sharpen that. By the way, some people who do planetary astrophotography, they actually use this multi-scale transf linear transform to sharpen their pictures, their planets, the moon. And so they put a lot more emphasis here on the bias a little bit like the Registax wavelet sharpening algorithm, but that's just as a side note. So once we have entered that, we go down to the next layer. Here we again activate the noise reduction. We put again the amount to 50. We put the threshold down now to two and the iteration to two. We can again put a little bias in here and we go down to the next one. Here again the bias, noise reduction. Here we go now down to a one. So you see we go lower and lower with the noise we remove because there is less and less no noise. Amount again 50% and iteration two again. With that we go to the last layer, again the bias, noise reduction, threshold now 0.5, amount again 50 as always, iteration only one. And with that we have done that we do not have to add any noise reduction to the residual layer. This is too big so there will be no noise. What we also can do we can activate the de-ringing which also ensures that the stars have a nice quality. And with that, we do not need the preview anymore. Close it down. And we can actually activate this process. And we're finished. So let's see now how good it actually has removed the noise. So here on the left, we have now the untreated picture. And here on the right, the treated picture. Let's just create previews. Okay. And I think the result is quite amazing. I don't know how good you can see it on YouTube, but this looks pretty much smoothed out. And here there's really a lot of noise. And by the way, if there's still some large structure noise in your picture, you can now run, as long as you have it in the nonlinear stage, the ACDNR process, for which I also have a tutorial already published. And this will then also remove this large scale noise. Last but not least, and be it just for the fun of it. Let's now let it compete against the noise exterminator. So I throw this on here on the untreated one. 
while this is great and it's better than other standard uh, picks inside processes like ACDNR alone, it is definitely worse than the noise exterminator. Noise exterminator has done a way better job and it was much faster. If you think what we have now to go all through here to get to this result and here just throw it on there. So again, my recommendation, if you have some spare money, noise exterminator is really a great process and I'm not paid from, from Rust to state that, but it really is a game changer. And I'm quite of impressed by myself every time. But that said, still the results we got out of the multi-scale linear transform is quite good and that's for free. So I hope I did not confuse you too much. I hope it was helpful and if it was please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, see you next time and clear skies.